Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today we have got two games for you, Hyde United and Bamber Bridge Awaiters in the Evo Stick Northern Premier Division. Now before we get into today's episode, first of all I just want to say that uh, a few of you commented um, across a number of videos recently to be fair actually, a few of you have commented saying you know there's a lot of background noise and I didn't think there was much I could do about it. There's a fan in the background, my laptop fan, that just goes a bit mental really because my laptop's quite underpowered now, getting quite old now. I desperately need to get something new to start making videos with. But uh, for now, I've got this laptop. It's really loud fan in the background that makes a really annoying noise in the, sort of the, the low background. So a lot of you with headphones can hear it. Um, and I didn't think anything I could do about it until FM Jellico commented on a video the other day telling me about some plugins that I can use um, to, to try and dampen or at least try and reduce the noise in the background. So hopefully you'll notice that there's no noise in the background. I don't think my audio is, is changed too much. So uh, let me know what you think in the comment section if this is a, a good move. Do I sound awful or is, is it better now that this... I mean, you can probably hear it now because the laptop fan is going overdrive right now. So um, it may come through the little, the little profile that I've made, the sound profile that I made. But we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully it's better for you. So let me know in the comment section if it is. Right then, into today's episode then. And I think the first thing that I want to do is show you the two new signings that we've made in between episodes we signed two more players which i think was quite good we we still need to make a few more signings i think we do need to just try and strengthen the side just a little bit two players going out on loan there bradley roberts subject to another bid from ghoul um he said no to them about three times but they don't stop trying so i don't think they'll get him but if they do i, I won't mind too much because i think he's not going to be our starting left back this, this season rather um two more signings to tell you about then connor shanks comes in as a right-sided winger um, he's played very well so far in the games that he has played. Three-star current ability, five-star potential at 19 years old. On non-contract terms as well, after having two seasons at Bradford where he didn't break into any sort of team, got released and is now playing for Lincoln United. So he's been quite good. He'll play in today's episode, uh, perhaps in the second game, not the first game, second game probably. And then Reese Ford comes in from loan from Coventry, uh, three-star current ability centre-back. So we just need a little bit more cover there, I think, in centre-back position. Just a little bit more versatility. Uh, we're not paying him anything either, which is quite good. So hopefully he'll be a decent player when needed. Won't be a first choice, but we needed a little bit more cover there with some actual strength and depth at the back. So I'm looking forward to it. He should be a decent player. Um, not been on loan anywhere. Been at Coventry for years. Not made a first team appearance yet. So hopefully he'll make his debut at some point soon in this series. So there we go. Two more signings to add. I'm still looking for... I'm just still looking for players that are more than three-star current ability, if I'm honest with you. We've got a lot of three-star current ability players. We need to try and up that a little bit i don't think we're going to really get any now until next season i think all the good players at this level will probably be taken so uh we've signed a few more scouts we've got two more scouts on the on the team as well as director of football actually um so we've now got three scouts technically whereas we only had one before this last episode that's my fault i didn't really do much about that should have got a few more scouts but uh either way we've learned now that uh, that's not the way to go things with one scout we've got a few more scouts now so hopefully by january or we, know, we, we can we can make transfers anytime we want actually because we're a non-league club but hopefully by next summer at least we'll have a good short list of players that we really want to get and we can really focus on since you were last here then uh it was a bit of a slow start to the season i've got to say uh obviously you were last here for the whitby town game where we considered right at the end of that game that was really frustrating uh we then played frickly athletic and lost 2-0 again two late or late-ish goals there which was a bit annoying i've got to say um, I think we did deserve a little bit more in that game. Frickley, it was a very even game, but Frickley just had the legs in the last bit of the game, unfortunately. Uh, we then played Buxton, who at the time were third in the league. We went to a more defensive formation in this one, and we got absolutely overrun. I don't know how we only considered one. We should have considered loads more than that. Uh, we did also have, actually, a disallowed goal in this one. So we had a disallowed goal in the Whitby game and a disallowed goal in the Buxton game. So potentially we could have got two points from those games if those goals hadn't been disallowed for offside. I mean, they probably were offside anyway, so we can't complain too much. But if they'd been given, we'd be on two extra points. So after that game, I've decided to scrap that formation. I don't want to play that formation again because it's it just didn't work at all. So we've got a new one that I'll show you in a minute that actually has worked. Um, we didn't play it against Curzon Ashton. We played the attacking formation that we played against Whitby Town against Curzon Ashton, the formation we used all last season. And it worked really well. Uh, three goals scored by Connor Shanks, the new guy, Connor Robinson and Matt Cotton. They scored a goal as well, but it wasn't really too much to worry about as Curzon Ashton were brushed aside easily, which was quite nice. And we then played Kids Grove with this new formation that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. Um, we're playing the 4-4-2 diamond, essentially. That's what we're using this game. And it worked really well. Two late goals from Mum and Connor Robinson camped out there, even later goal from Bradley Grayson to make sure we win it 2-1. And they were third in the league at the time, or maybe second in the league when we played them. So that was a really great result for us, which means we've got two wins from five games it puts us 14th in the league so not too bad to be fair sort of a, the lower mid table sort of thing which is quite good to see um we've got Hyde united today who sit in fourth so they've had a decent start to the season not lost a game yet in fact the only team in the league to not have lost a game so that's pretty good going for Hyde. 
But then we've also got Bamba Bridge, who are down in 20th. So a tale of two sides so far at the start of the season against the team that's playing today. So hopefully six points on the board. I think we'll probably only get three. But a push if we're looking against hard, maybe four points today. So that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. I've said every single point total possible there, really, haven't I? That's involved a win because I think we'll beat Bamber Bridge. Just not sure how we go against Hyde. If we played like we did against Kidsgrove, we'll definitely beat Hyde. But I don't know if that game was just a one-off with a new formation. I don't know. So uh, we'll have to go and see, obviously. So this is it then, the new formation. We're playing vertical Tiki Taka. Um, I, the formation we had where we got absolutely overrun by... Uh, who did we play? We got absolutely overrun by... <laughs> I've forgotten the name of the team now, Buxton. We uh, we did it. It was a, it was a direct counter-attack and it just didn't work, really. So I looked at our, our team report... Uh, and apparently we've got a lot of players with good first touch. Uh, and we've also got a lot of good decision makers and a high level of flair and things like that. And a good level of acceleration. That's not too important to Tiki Taka though. But I think these three, uh, a high level of flair, good decision making and good first touch is, is pretty is pretty integral, at least I think, to a good Tiki Taka style. So I thought we'd try that. It worked last game. We're going to try it again today. So Michael Emery starts in goal. Uh, the new left back that we introduced last episode that I've still not got a nickname for, Ozima, is at left back. Uh, maybe just call him like Ozzy Osbourne, but that's, that seems a bit of a jump just because it says Oz. So uh, let me know in the comment section still nicknames of him because I really want to get one for him. Uh, Jacqueline and Connor Narty start, or Stephen Narty, sorry, start at the back. I think they started last episode as well with Jake Walker at right back. Jack Holmes, who... Looked like he wasn't going to play too much this season as McQuaid and Skeffington came into midfield. But now playing a defence midfielder, he's found his way back into the side. So Jack Holmes in CDM just behind McQuaid and Skeffington with Matt Cotton in that attacking midfield position. With Connor Robinson as our pressing forward and Reagan Hutchinson as our poacher. So kickoff is upon us. We're away today, but we're in our white kit still. Hide in the red kit, of course. It's been, a, it's been a mixed start to the season, I'll give you that. Uh, we started off pretty slowly, but the past two games we have impressed, I've got to say. So I've got a bit more hope now. After those first three league defeats, I was thinking this is going to be a long season. But we seem to have turned it around just a little bit in the past two games. Although Hyde coming forward, looking to score an early goal. Play it back to Hill at the uh, the left left wing position. Hill puts it, so he's sort of dribbling around with it into Platt, who shoots from the edge of the area and four minutes into the game, Hyde are wandle up. So... That's probably the worst start possible to the game. Really not a good one, that, I've got to say. We've got it all to do now. So my thinking is, I mean, until that goal went in, that this is the formation we'd use against teams that are stronger than us, and we play the more attacking winger formation against teams that aren't as good as us, or teams that we really should be beating, teams below us, teams sort of at a similar level sort of thing. Um, but if we are losing this game, perhaps it... Although I say that, though, they've only had the one shot... We've had four four shots compared to their one shot. We've got loads of possession. I think we've just maybe got unlucky with that first shot. So let's not make jump to conclusions. You're not jumping to conclusions. It's me that's jumping to conclusions. You've not said anything yet. So it's just me jumping to conclusions. Although the lack of highlights in the rest of this first half really is suggesting that perhaps this isn't the formation to use. We're not creating clinical chances at least. We've had no shots on target until now maybe as McQuaid puts the ball into the edge of the area. Connor Robinson gets his third of the season putting it in the back of the net, levelling things up just before half-time. I love that. You love a first half where there's two highlights and both of them are goals. You know, that's... I'd like to see a little bit more action, please, football manager. Just a little bit more action to make it slightly more entertaining, please. Either way, it's a, it's a pretty good end to the first half there. Players look very motivated for the second half as well. So, fingers crossed, we can take that momentum from that goal we scored just before half-time. Hopefully, it's killed Hyde off. And we can go into this game and grab a late winner or something like that. That'd be brilliant. Chance now for Hard United now as they get a free kick in their own half around the centre circle spot. Uh, the cross comes in pretty deep and actually goes right to the back post. And it's not been cleared very well. It's still not been cleared very well after the shot was blocked. And it comes back to their number 10 on the edge of the area. Puts it into their goalkeeper. Their goalkeeper puts it into their striker who shoots at the goalkeeper. Who really, Michael Emery should have done better with that. Sort of palms it into the back of the net. And unfortunately, Hyde have now gone 2-1 up in this game. Which is... Not what you want to see at all. We're going to go to the boys, get creative out there. I think getting creative in these final uh, half hour or so of the game might be the trick. Although, Hyde United are coming forward. Another deep cross. A superb save this time from Michael Emery to keep them out. That would have killed the game off completely if they'd scored that one. They do have a resulting corner coming in now. The corner collected by Michael Emery. Very bravely there. Fantastic stuff. Let's see what his distribution is like. Out to Jacqueline pretty short. Can Jacqueline play it out? Uh, to, well, he, he plays out the pitch rather than playing it out to another player. So that was a bit of a pointless one. But uh, fair play, Michael. I think we need to make some changes, though. Reagan Hutchinson has not played particularly well in his poacher position. So Jack Warrener is going to come on for him instead. Uh, we should probably maybe get another striker. 
Connor Robinson's good, but if we're going to try and play a two-striker system, we do need a really good effective poacher or advance forward to play in that position. Uh, Jack Holmes is looking very tired. Ryan, uh, I thought we had uh, Gary, Gary, um, whatever he's called, on the bench, the young guy. He's not on the bench. He's also a defensive midfielder or can play there, but no one else can at the moment. So we're going to have to leave him on the pitch for now, despite him being quite tired out there. Uh, this, Michael Jackson has not played well, neither has Narty. So we're going to bring Aidan Walker on. He's another guy that we brought in over pre-season. We're going to bring him on for Michael Jackson, I think, in that centre-back position. I think that maybe just give it might, might just give us a bit more energy at the back. It may give us a bit more of a, of a confidence boost at the back, having a, a fresh face on there. So two changes there. Hopefully, in these final 20 minutes or so, if we go on to a more attacking formation, it will make it a bit of changes. We'll win this game. Or at least get a draw. That'd be nice. At least get a draw. Chance now for us, perhaps, as McQuaid puts the ball forward to Connor Robinson, who looks to chip the goalkeeper. I thought that was going to be a beautiful uh, effort on goal there, but it wasn't to be. Cook collects the ball and he clears it back up towards Narty. Narty, his header wasn't great. Number eight for us, whoever that one is, didn't really collect the ball very well. Uh, I think it might be McQuaid who's number eight. And they're coming forward now, Hardy United, down the right side of the pitch. The cross is an absolutely superb cross from Hardy United. I can't really fault that goal because that was superb. Our defending should have been so much better. But Hyde did fantastically well there to uh, <laughs> to score that goal, to be fair. They now go 3-1 up. That's a bit of a bummer. I, we really are down and out of this game now. That's unfortunate. I thought we could do well in this game. I thought we might be able to recreate how we played against Kidsgrove. But clearly not. Clearly Hyde were wise. And perhaps that game against Kidsgrove was just a one-off with this formation. So... As the uh, the final whistle is about to be blown as we clear their free kick. There it is, full time. Hyde 3, Lincoln United 1. Brings us back down to ground. I was quite excited. Oh, should never, ever give the team talk to my assistant manager. He's looked, all these players now look switched off because apparently we gave it our best effort. We didn't really. We weren't that great in that game. It's frustrating. As I was saying, I was excited after those two wins. I thought perhaps we can turn the season, well, turn the season around. We've had five games, three losses, two wins. Now, four losses two wins but I thought we'd be able to just get on a bit of a winning streak perhaps an unbeaten run for example uh, but it wasn't to be obviously and it does show how far we have to come this season it does show that you know the team we have at the moment really isn't good enough and I think change we need to get players we just need to get high quality players but those high quality players either don't want to come to us or just aren't available to us at the moment. So it looks like Bamber Bridge won their game as well because they've gone above us in the table now. But I'm still going to go for that attacking winger formation. I think that's the way to go. I think. I hope. It will pay off. I'm sure it will if we win the game. We've got a director of football again now. I think we have one in our first season, but we let him go for the second season. And I thought we may get one back again because it will help with scouting a little bit. But I'm never 100% sure how to actually use them because I don't want him to actually go out there and make the transfers for me. I kind of just want him to scout the players for me. So if we ask him to suggest transfer targets or loan targets, maybe for, I don't know, a striker or do we, maybe we need a striker. I don't know. We need someone to score more goals and honest with you. He suggested these three players and then we have to get someone to scout them for us, maybe. I mean, this guy from Telford's got uh, three star current ability. We, we need better than three star current ability. I'm not going to lie to you. We do need better than three star current ability. Uh, another, let's go on loan again, loan, goalkeeper maybe, I mean I love Michael Emery but at the moment he's considered quite a few goals this season, uh, but at the same time we're not scoring many are we? we, we scored loads of goals last season and we kept loads of clean sheets last season so clearly something's gone wrong there, we're just not good enough for this level in terms of our strikers and perhaps the goalkeeper, we do need to work on that but we'll get those guys scouted out, but if you've got a better way of finding players who are good quickly, please let me know, because I need to know desperately. Oh, the FA Cup second qualifying round draw is made today. This, this is huge. Now, the FA Cup is is massive. In fact, before we do that, I just want to look at the rules um, for second qualifying round. 4.5k if we just win the second qualifying round, which is mental. The prize money in the FA Cup for a cup like us is huge. The next round is 7.5. Fourth qualifying round is 12. If we, if we ever made it to the first round and got like a, an away tie, just a club with like, 5,000 capacity. The, the ticket sales from that would be amazing. I'd love to try and go far in the FA Cup. Honestly, I don't think we'll make it past the second qualifying round, if I'm honest with you. So I don't know why I'm getting so excited about it. But I do enjoy the FA Cup. Uh, there's 160 teams to draw at the moment. So let's just draw all teams because I'm not sitting through all that. Draw all teams. 
Who have we got in this? I, I mean, I can't see it. I can't see the blue anywhere for us. Um, Farsley Celtic, right down at the bottom here in the Vanarama National League North. So one division above us, Farsley Celtic. How big's their stadium? If we have a look at their stadium, it's 3,900. That could be... We, we, of course, we get 50% of the, uh, the, the ticket sales on this. Let's look at their schedule. What kind of attendance do they get? Um, 300. Another 300, uh, a 200 or just under 300. Although they've they've not won a game this season yet. So actually, this game could be very winnable. Like if they're in a bad run of form, this could be this could be excellent for us. Okay, I'm kind of confident now that we might win the second qualifying round of the FA Cup. That would be fantastic if we can do that. Like that would get us 4.5k in the bank, an extra bit of money from ticket sales. And in the next round as well, we're potentially facing an, a bigger club where we get more money. So it's a win-win. That's that's a good draw. Lincoln United have made the FA Cup first round before. Granted, it was quite a while ago, but I'm sure they've made the FA Cup first round before. Yep, here we go. 1991-92 season. So Lincoln United reached the FA Cup uh, first round for the first time, and they lost 7-0 to Huddersfield Town. But at least they got there the first round. That's amazing. Uh, this was the first and still the only time a club from the Central Midlands League Reach the FA Cup first round. That's 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 a good record to have. That's pretty impressive. Ah, now this is what I'm talking about. These are the type of players that we want to be signing, but he's already on loan from another club at Yeovil. So we'll add them to the shortlist. We'll keep scouting them out. These are the, we need to scout players out who are already on loan at other clubs in our division. I think that's maybe what we need to do so we can get them for next season. That's that's perhaps what I'm thinking. Right then, let's change things up for this game against Bamber Bridge. We're going to go back to the the winger formation instead today when it wants to change. So. All that we need to change, actually, is get Hutchinson and Holmes off the pitch. Bring on... Uh, we want to bring on... Now, I would say Luke Holmes on my left-hand side, but I want to bring on Chris Kelly, actually. Chris Kelly has played well when he's played, to be fair. In that first game that we won, I think he got two assists, maybe, or an assist in the goal. Played very well. So, I want to get him playing. And then on the right-hand side of the pitch, we want to bring on Connor Shanks, the new winger, of course, as well. So, I've also noticed as well, we've got quite a lot of players that could be twins because they've got surnames the same we've got Connor Robinson and we've got Harry Robinson we've got Luke Holmes and we've got Jack Holmes and then we've got Aidan Walker and then we've got Jake Walker so we, we've pretty much got a, a team of twins is what we're going to be calling this now a team of twins I mean we can pretend they are in fact I think that's what we should do we should pretend that they're all twins to then get a media spin on it and then like the BBC will come to Lincoln United and be like all right, lads, you've got a team of twins. Like, how is this amazing? All these twins playing for Lincoln United and you're going to win the league with a load of twins. Like, that's amazing, isn't it? Like, oh, you can think of the headlines now. The team of two families because it will get everyone with the same surname and pretend that they're the same family and that'll be amazing. And I'm, I need to just shut up. That's... Never speak of that again, Tom. Never speak of that again. Right then, kickoff is upon us against Bamba Bridge today. They've won their previous two games, so they're in a little bit of form. Um, I thought we were in a little bit of form, but then we lost last game. So, Janelli puts the cross in, uh, cleared by Shanks, and goes all the way up to Connor Robinson. He's decided now to play it into Skeffington, who's tackled quite easily there by Price. And now Bamba Bridge have a chance to come forward again inside the first minute of the game. If they score a minute into today's game, I'll be very cross. There we go. They've scored a minute into today's game, and I'm very, very cross, as you can tell by my voice. Two awful starts to both games today, then. Really, really not very good. In the meantime, though, we're not really doing much to get ourselves back in this game, which is kind of worrying, actually. I expected better from the boys. The main thing that I'm worried about is us slipping into a period of really bad form that we just can't get out of. That's what worries me the most. I mean, I, I don't mind losing games as if we lose lose one, win one, lose one, win one. That's inconsistent form. I'd be really worried if we get into a bit of bad form and not know how to get out of it. That's that's what I'm very worried about this season. Because if we get into that, that really could spell relegation for us. And that I don't want to get relegated. Really do not want to get relegated, pretty much. 
Goal kick for us then. Michael Emery just before half time. If we can grab another goal like last game just before half time, that'd be great. The ball forward was pretty poor. And Bamba Bridge can come forward once again. Martin on the ball. He gets tackled by Jake Water. That's a great tackle. Great clearance up towards Matt Cotter now, who can run at the defence. Plays it back to Connor Robinson. I had nowhere to go, really. McQuaid now on the ball. No one really helping them out, to be fair. Skeffington up towards Connor Robinson. Doesn't quite get there, but Chris Kelly gets on the end of the ball, who puts it into McQuaid. McQuaid back to Chris Kelly, who shoots and just puts it wide of the post. That would have been a fantastic goal if it had gone the back of the net. You know, we are trying seven shots apiece in this game, three on target apiece. It's just the, the, the very early goal when we weren't switched on is the difference right now. Tell you what, let's make some changes as well. Skeffington, after our heights at the start of the episode, hasn't played particularly well on a 6.5. So we're going to move Connor, uh, Matt Cotton rather out to the wing because he can play there, kind of. And then Mum's going to come in in that shadow striker position. So that's the change we'll make right now in the 55th minute. We may make a few later on, but I think that could be something that changes the game in our favour. Free kick though for Bamber Bridge in the meantime as they start to come forward. White on the ball, plays it into Moreland. Moreland back to White. They've got a few players down that right-hand side of the pitch. The cross comes in. Great save from Michael Emery. That is why I keep him in between the sticks. Yeah, he's not kept a clean sheet this season. Yeah, it looks like we're about to lose our fifth game of the season, but sometimes he makes a save like that and I just love him to pieces. So, <laughs> I mean, that's my justification at the moment. Uh, we've also got a clearance all the way up to Connor Robinson who finds himself in the box, surrounded by players, out to Matt Cotton on the wing, looks to put the cross in, doesn't quite... Oh my gosh, we've just scored a goal because their player crossed it to... Oh, that was beautiful. Their player has just put in the cross of the season. Connor Robinson gets on the end of it and scores the goal. There's a highlight straight from kickoff, which probably means a goal is coming for someone as the ball... No one's challenged Martin there. Okay, let's not get excited anymore. That... <sighs> okay. Well, for a brief second... A br it's not even changed a minute look usually after you score the the goal they if they score a me <laughs> come on lads that we should do better than that michael emery yeah i was praising you a minute ago but then you do things like that where you stand still and let it go in the back of a net a little bit harder what i was saying is that goal was scored so quickly they both say 63rd minute usually one would say 63 one would say 64 but they happened so quickly that they're both in the 63rd minute which is ridiculous um <sighs> That's annoying me, that has. That's really killed the game off, I think. This has not gone well, this episode. What are we going to do? I don't really know. I don't know who we can bring on, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Luke Holmes, on my left-hand side. Get yourself on the pitch. Inside forward, on attack. Do something. Now, please. Again, it's not like we're out of this game. We're in this game. Like The, the, the match stats are very even, if ever so slightly in our favour, but we just... Lack a little bit of concentration at the back. A little bit. Of, if we just lack a bit of quality as well. If we just got that extra bit of quality. I think we'd be a really, really good side. A really good side. But we don't have it right now. We're going to have to wait till next season. Because all the quality has already been taken. Which is a bit annoying. It could be a long season this. It could really be quite a long season. We've got one more chance though. I think before the final whistle blows. Mum on the ball has a shot from... Oh, that was actually a decent effort. Mum hits the post, bounces off the back of the goalkeeper, nearly goes in the back of the net. We've got a corner coming in now, but I think this probably will just be the ending highlight of the game. They've won a free kick as well, so that, they'll take their time with that. That's the result then. Bamber Bridge 3, Lincoln United 1. This has not been a great episode. It's not been a great start to the season. We are sitting 19th, as you can see down here on the table, on 6 points. A win, a win would take us back up to the table, so one more win. Two wins would take us on the edge of playoffs if no one else got any points. That's what I'm saying, actually. So it's a bit pointless. But there's still a long way to go this season. That's probably the, going to be the main talking point all season. I think every episode, I'm going to find myself saying, there's still a long way to go. A long way to go still until it turns out there's three games left of the season and we're in the relegation zone. And then we'll be relegated. Maybe. Maybe I'm being pessimistic. Just just a little bit. We can turn it around, Tom. We can turn it around. I'm battling my inner monologues here. One minute I'm pessimistic. One minute I'm optimistic. In the meantime, I'm crying inside because I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what, actually, next episode is going to come around very quickly. In fact, next weekend, we've got this Integro Dutton League Cup game in the middle. But I do want to do the Farsley Celtic game on camera. So next episode, Farsley Celtic and then Gainsborough Trinity. So that's a pretty local game, actually. So that's going to be a great episode, actually. Farsley and Gainsborough, that's going to be fantastic. So 
a quick turnaround, but I'll see you tomorrow for Farsley and Gainsborough. That's fantastic. If you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with notifications turned on so you never miss an episode. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.